Hey everybody, it is update patch note time, and this time we have the Halloween update for 2022. It's new friends and old foes, so let's go ahead and check it out. The update will be on October 3 at your normal times for here. In the central time in the U.S., it is 2 a.m., so you want to be mindful of that. And the patch notes say that the spooky season is upon us, but legends are not scared off by such stuff, right? Uh, anyway, let's check out what's new and what's in the update. So here, if the whole deal is too long and you didn't want to read it, here is a brief synopsis. And after we cover these five points or so, you can just uh, close the video if you want. But uh, we'll go into much more details later. So first up is the Halloween event with another run of Rasputin. And I will admit that I did have fun with last year's Halloween event with Rasputin. So this will be interesting to see how they changed it and obviously made it a lot better, uh, I would guess. Next is the Fortress campaign with the Soviet Tier 8 Premium Cruiser crunched at as the ultimate reward. So, okay, uh, Tier 8 Premium Soviet Cruiser. That is, uh, that's great. Uh, German alternate battleships become researchable. So all the early access ships will now be researchable in the normal ship tree for the Germans. And now we have the Tier 8 Prinz Rupik leading the way. Okay, uh, I was pausing there a little bit to uh, make sure I had the pronunciation right. I probably messed it up, but uh, there it is, Prince Rupik. Uh, next up is the legendary French battleship Bog Borgon, <laughs> Borgon Bureau Project. I'm sure I did not get that right, but it is a legendary tier French battleship in the Bureau. And from what I read in the patch notes um, a few minutes ago, I believe that this is a free Bureau project. So I don't think you have to buy it um, for steel or silver credits or anything else or doubloons. I think it's free as we have been used to in the game in the past. And of course there's more. So there you go. Um, that is a brief synopsis of what is in the next update. So stay tuned if you want to get into the weeds here on the extreme details of this update. So let's get into it. Wait, where's the code for the goodies? Which would be five rust bucket camos and one common container. And the code is right here in the pin board above. So I will leave links for all that down in the details below. Next is a light in the dark returns anew. So believe it or not, the malicious Rasputin is back again. You'll be able to have a go at beating him and saving the world from October 17 through November 7. Participating in the event and acquiring select store bundles will net you ancient shards, which can be spent on three themed guises so your officers can dress up for Halloween and you can get new crates as well. So here there will not be any new Halloween commanders but we will have Halloween guises. So uh, keep that in mind. I believe the same Halloween commanders that um, have been in the game before should be available in the store. I'm not really sure if they specifically spelled that out in the patch notes but that's what I believe will happen. The biggest prize uh, from the Halloween event will be the Commonwealth Tier 5 Premium Cruiser Perth. And so there's a Commonwealth uh, Premium Cruiser, so I assume there will be a commander to go with that cruiser. And read the new ships of the update section to find out more about her. If you manage to complete the scenario on the highest difficulty, you will also get the Japanese Tier 3 Premium Battleship Kawaki. Alright, so uh, stay tuned for a blog about that event in the future. Next up is the campaign, and it's called the Fortress Campaign. A big one to get is the Kronstadt was planned as the headliner of Battlecruiser Project 69. It was ordered in the 1930s. She was only partially completed when the events of World War II put a halt to her construction, and it didn't resume after the war ended due to Soviet leadership deeming such ships obsolete. Kronstadt packs a radar consumable, the best torpedo damage reduction of her tier, <laughs> 25%, I guess for a cruiser, that's pretty good, and the biggest health pool among her rivals by far. 
not to mention some of the most powerful guns aside of legendary cruisers. However, one can't call her agile. The Kronstadt is slower than most of her peers. So, um, well, I, I guess Hipper will take a look at that and see what, what he thinks. Um, yeah, it's always good to check out the cruisers to see if you can make them agile or not. I, I guess you won't be able to on this one. And you have the usual framework of 100 milestones over five weeks and a catch-up mechanic is enabled. Here are the prizes. Without Admiralty backing, you'll get 50 common boosters, 8 victory camos, 8 too hot to handle camos. I think those were hot camos actually. And 8 type 3 Halloween camos. 350,000 research points, so you can use that to boost uh, barrel projects. 145,000 Commander XP, 450,000 credits, 7,500 Global XP, 14 promotion orders and insignia, commendation, 8 days premium account, 3 fall big crates, a Russian Commander crate, a patch background and a patch symbol, and the value is 15,000 30 doubloons or right around um, I think that's around $60 is what they value that at so additionally for 2500 doubloons Admiralty backing you will get an additional 50 rare boosters 22 victory camos 22 more hot too hot to handle camos 16 type 3 Halloween camos 1,400,000 research points so you'll be able to boost through an entire segment if you wanted uh, in the bureau with, with these research points 275,000 commander XP 2.5 million credits silver credits 13,500 global XP 26 promotion orders three insignias three commendations uh, three dollars worth of doubloons there 750 of those 12 fall big crates and one commemorative flag and the Soviet Tier 8 Premium Cruiser Kronstadt. All right, and the value of that reward with Admiralty backing is 73,263 doubloons, um, right around $280 at $40 per 10,000 doubloons. Uh, German alternate battleships are now researchable, as I said in the preview there. And Prince Rupert is here, and the German battlecruiser line is researchable. Get them now for powerful secondary suites, torpedoes, and sonar on board the higher tier ships, as well as unique damage control party with limited charges, but a faster reload. And my personal experience is that the battlecruisers, for me anyway, were much more effective using HE. So I'm still working on these alternate battle cruisers but that was my uh, takeaway from from when I was running those battle cruisers uh, you want to look at HE so here is the bureau project the Bargon Bureau uh, it's a new bureau project and is simply available for everyone completed to obtain the French legendary tier battleship uh, Bergon with main battery reload booster and access to an engine boost consumable so uh, access may mean that you can switch this out for another consumable in one of those slots. She's also one of the fastest legendary battleships with a maximum speed of 32 knots. And she has some powerful AA defenses. And I have noticed whenever I've been in a battleship with a booster, it does, yeah, boost your speed, but it doesn't, you know, make it like an agile cruiser or anything. But um, it's kind of cool to mess with the engine boost. So that this will probably be pretty cool. This update also features research points as a campaign reward for the first time. So that's what we saw in the rewards up above. These can be used to speed up progress in the same way as the breakthrough mechanic works for the Bureau projects. Uh, Legendary Birthday 22, Midway Hikaryu, and Bergon. I, I really have to work on a pronunciation of that. So sorry, everybody. Uh, but yeah, from what I saw of the research points that they offer in the campaign, you'll be able to use those um, research points to boost basically one stage in one segment. So it's not like you're going to boost through the entire bureau, but you will use it for 1 60th, assuming it is 12 segments and five stages per segment. So it's... Um, it's kind of a minimal thing, but it's a cool thing to add. So let me just say that. 
Uh, new ships of the update is a British Tier 5 premium aircraft carrier, Ark Royal. Holy cow, I think everybody's been looking for the Ark Royal. I certainly have. Be very interested to uh, try it out. It should have uh, biplanes, which is what the Ark Royal had when it took out the Bismarck. I think those were sopped with camels. Uh, these um, could also have freries, I, I've heard, as um, one of the alternate uh, aircraft on the Ark Royal. So it'll be interesting to check that out. I think everyone's going to be excited to uh, take a look at the Ark Royal, that's for sure. And uh, some flair with a special Halloween skin if fantasy is up your alley. So, all right, I think there's a couple folks I know that don't do uh, fantasy. They're just historical only, but be kind of cool to check it out in any event. Then we have the French Tier 7 Premium Cruiser Bayard. Between her fast turret traverse, above average speed and agility, and moreover, a combo of main battery reload booster and engine boost, there are some very compelling reasons to take her into battle. And uh, kind of sounds like this will be your agile cruiser possibility. So uh, maybe use the same commander that uh, maybe you tried on the Colbert possibly. And this thing, uh, depending on what the reload is and, and what it really does, it, it might be somewhat comparable to the uh, Colbert. Uh, probably not. Colbert is um, overwhelming fire starter. It's a flamethrower. I uh, would be interested to try this out and see if I could make it uh, perform close to the Colbert. That would be very interesting. A Commonwealth Tier 5 Premium Cruiser Perth. Yeah, so this is what we're talking about with the Commonwealth Cruiser. So we're going to be looking for a commander here pretty soon. Uh, I guess we do have the generic commander for uh, the Commonwealth. So uh, maybe we won't get a commander. We'll have to see what the patch notes say down below. But it has sonar, crawling smoke generator, and yeah, I think if you're at one quarter speed or half speed, you'll stay within the smoke screen. It's not a true rolling smoke, but it is a crawling smoke. Above average concealment and agility, what's not to like? And she gets uh, a nearly tailor-made commander. So we do have a commander here, all right. Then we have the uh, Japanese tier three premium battleship Kawachi, which is what we saw earlier above. The first Imperial Japanese Navy Dreadnought boasts a thick armor belt and six turrets, each complete with two 12-inch guns, and she's anything but fast, but the sheer number of guns let her display strength in situations where torpedoes are not prevalent. And I do have fun with the battleships with the overwhelming number of guns, even though they're not fast, just like it says here. So that'll be very interesting to try that out at Tier 3. All right, and then we have the Commonwealth Commander for the Cruisers, Harold B. Farncombe. And let me see, new commander emerges so that Perth and Commonwealth Cruisers in the future will have a worthy commander at her helm. And here is the skills. His base trait is careful, which decreases both detectability range and time for your ship when firing in smoke up to 10%. Well, that's kind of cool. That might be a... Um, uh, inspiration that you might want to use on some other cruisers, especially when you're doing a smogathon, maybe, and you're really relying on the smoke. Or even um, maybe destroyers. You, maybe you want to rely on the smoke a little bit when you're firing uh, with a destroyer. And it, the unique skill is Shell from the Ghost, which will increase both the main barrier range and shell grouping when you're firing in the smoke, up to 4%. All right. This commander will be available as part of the Perth bundle. So apparently when you obtain the Perth, you will also get the commander essentially for free. It comes with the ship, it looks like. And it's obtainable for ancient shards in the Halloween section of the store. So look for that. Balance changes and there are some blanket changes for carriers, uh, for carrier squadrons and carrier visibility. Squadrons receive more HP but they're taking baby steps. Yeah, the the uh, airplanes do need more HP, that is for sure, uh, as the last increase worked quite tangibly for squadron survivability. When it comes to visibility, their initial parameters didn't account for superstructure height, but now it will. So this might change the survivability of motherships for some nations more than others, but on average, carriers will still survive better than any other ship type the carrier hunters are rarely able to break through until the 
mid to late stages of the battle. And that is true, uh, unless you run your aircraft carrier out in the middle of the match, which I've seen a couple times. So what I've seen, so there is a whole suite of changes here for the carriers. I'm not going to go through them individually, but what I did see here is the surface detectability range um, got nerfed a little bit from 10.6 kilometers to 10.7 and the air detectability range changed from 7.4 to 7.5 so and then the dive bombers HP is improved from 1800 to 1900 and torpedo bombers uh, for the Langley is 1700 up to 1800 and this is basically this is similar to uh, the changes on uh, that you see on every single aircraft carrier here the um, detectability is worsened but the dive bomber HP is improved so uh, that is basically what they have done across the board ships like the independence here only had the service detectability change and now that was improved here so um, yeah basically the detectability is worse but the HP is improved is basically what's going on here with all these changes to the aircraft carriers. So uh, in some cases, uh, the detectability is improved a little bit like here in the midway. So, all right, we could spend another 30 minutes on that, but I'll go right down to the bug fixes, uh, cross platform bug fixes. Some of the engine settings for ships were incorrect, hindering them more than intended with an active flooding. Ships typically get a 20% penalty to their maximum speed whenever there's an instance of flooding. I didn't know that exact number. That's very interesting. Okay, but a good number of them were penalized by 50%. Only a few ships will now retain the 50% penalty, and those ships are Lenin, Olan, Stalingrad, Palo Emilio, Z-35, Vemer, Kleber, Jean Bart, and California. And then uh, council bug fixes... Ships sunk by semi-armor-piercing shells sometimes showed a just sunk in the battle log. Hmm. Okay. Blocked players could receive invitations from those who blocked them on rare occasions. Well, that's certainly not good. Glad they fixed that. Rare cases of damage control party not extinguishing a fire in combination with particular commander skills. Huh. I never saw that. Veribus units' a store page showed a color inverted camouflage. Oh, you can't have that. The USS Independence was missing her uh, anti aircraft information in the combat ranges widget. And then we had rare cases of bomb drops significantly missing the targeted area due to desynchronization. And it is great that they fixed that. Okay, so mobile bug fixes rare crashes on lower account levels all right well get your account levels up and you won't have to worry about that uh, some text around the UI, ui was slightly moved for better legibility all right and then other uh, logo update they have a small but significant change to the logo it looks even better now and then uh, camera we reworks fixed a problem that caused torpedo prediction to change direction after switching from high to low position with a torpedo camera for the following ships. Atlanta, Atlanta B, Flint, Minotaur, Plymouth, uh, a lot of ships here. All right, so they fixed that and then um, fixed a problem that caused the camera to pass through ship holes after they had sunk for big ships like the Montana, Yamato, and others. And last, we had artillery camera is now a little closer to the following ships. Fiji, Adane, Leander, and Edinburgh. So be brave this spine-chilling season and turn the tide. All right, well, that is it for the Halloween 2022 update. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.